Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hey, good morning, guys. Okay, something very, very creepy. And I'm sorry that we're doing this to you guys. Um, now, I, now I'm just thinking about like my tongue because there is a tongue eating creature found inside fish at a Texas state park that is what nightmares. Yeah, when you of. go fishing, it's one thing to look, you know, in your fish's mouth, but other to have something kind of staring back at you. Take a look at this. That's a croaker right there. This is a uh, tongue eating louse that are actually common parasites in certain kinds of fish. This uh, dateline, Galveston, Texas, the, the, the headline on KSAT.com, actually the lead line is, we know it's a spooky season, but a tongue eating parasite is apparently a real thing. It was recently found in a fish at Galveston Island State Park. Yeah, so the alien-like parasite actually detaches the fish's tongue before attaching itself to the fish's mouth and actually becomes the tongue. Mark Fisher, the director of the Coastal Fisheries Science Center said, tongue-eating louse or snapper-choking isopod are somewhat common among certain species of fish like Atlantic croaker, which you see right there, spotted sea trout, and a few species of snapper. What I would hope so, since you're calling it the snapper choking isopod. Okay, and here's most important what I think our viewers need to know, yeah. is the parasite feeds on fish's mucus, but it does not kill the fish or affect humans. They also said it's the only known case of a parasite functionally replacing the organ of its host. Is this not a horror movie waiting to happen? This is terrifying. By, by the way, this same guy down at Coastal Fishery said these isopod crustaceans are actually related to roly polies mm. you find in your yard. Of course they are. And I ha I'm a gardener and I have roly polies everywhere, so now I will not be able to get that out of my mind. You're going to check every fish that ever you meet in your life, whether you're eating it or watching it swim in a tank, right? Here's today's nine at nine. The CDC's vaccine advisors are meeting today. Moderna's booster, Johnson & Johnson's booster, and the possibility of mix and match boosters are at the top of the list. If given the thumbs up, it's up to the CDC's director to make recommendations. The House will vote today to hold Steve Bannon in contempt for defying a subpoena from the panel investigating the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. Bannon was reportedly talking to President Trump in the days leading up to January 6th, encouraging him to focus on the electoral process when lawmakers were meeting to count the Electoral College votes. The gunman responsible for the deadliest high school shooting in U.S. history, Nicholas Cruz, changing his plea to guilty on all 34 charges related to the Parkland shooting. Cruz killed 17 people and injured 17 others. The trial now moves to the penalty phase. Fugitive Brian Laundrie has been missing for more than a month. Federal agents say they've found what appears to be human remains at a Florida park, along with a bag belonging to Laundrie. This morning, the FBI is working to identify the remains. Two Chicago police officers are recovering from gunshot wounds after another officer's weapon went off during a struggle. It happened during a pursuit. The officers approached a suspect and started to struggle. One of the officers had his handgun out and it accidentally fired. Both officers are in good condition. Paris Hilton visited Capitol Hill urging Congress and President Biden to pass the Accountability for Congregate Care Act. The bill would establish a Bill of Rights for children placed in residential treatment centers and would create a federal commission to document abuse at those kinds of facilities. And who doesn't like to add their own flair to their phones? Now Z Flip 3 Bespoke Edition owners can do just that. Samsung is letting owners of the flip phone choose a black or silver phone frame and front and black colors of blue, black, white, yellow, or pink. The service will be available in November. Dune is out today. The sci-fi movie based on Frank Herbert's sci-fi novels stars Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya. You can see the movies in theaters or stream it on HBO Max. Happy belated birthday to SN double O P D O double G Snoop Dogg. As he celebrated his 50th birthday, he launched new music. The single Big Subwoofer is a first from a new rap group that includes Snoop, Ice Cube, E-40, and Too Short. And that's today's 9 at 9. Here's good news, Sarah. You were just nominated for an Emmy for that. Oh, so thank you. Well played. Well played. I had to. It's, you can't just say Snoop Dogg. You have to say Snoop Dogg. See, let me try it. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. So you can do it. <laughs> you can't. It can be done. Justin. <laughs> Let's check with Justin. Come on, Justin. Let's hear it. Who nope, is Martha nope. Stewart's best friend these days, Justin? <laughs> Say it. I can't believe he's 50. <laughs> is that really true? Who, who are we talking about? Snoop. Okay. Come on, 
thought you almost had it, Justin. No, that's all you, man. Uh, 69 degrees at the airport, 61 Kerrville, 66 Rock Springs, 74 right now in Del Rio. It, it, it's a nice morning. We've had a little bit of fog in spots. We're not expecting uh, that fog to last much longer, though. Temperatures next few days will be in the mid 80s as we get into the weekend. It's going to be rather warm and humid, too. We'll be up close to 90, I think, by Sunday. Uh, there's a look outside right now. Again, a few clouds here and there. 69 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 66, so that uh, temperature and dew point getting close together, and that's why we have had some fog. You go up to Bernie Stage, starting to see some fog show up there. Two and a half mile visibility. Kerrville's down to zero. Some new developments there. Even Del Rio dealing with some fog, and then Kennedy and Bevo have been dealing with it all morning long. There is a dense fog advisory there along the coast that goes for another hour or so. Pollen count, molds and ragweed, that's it. They're both low. Good news in that department. And forecast for today, up around 84 degrees. Easterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Guys. And we're right now checking uh, Transguide. And you can see right there on the Transguide sign, accident right lane closed. Use caution, slowing in that area. Traffic is moving. But uh, they are wisely merging to the left to get out of the way of those first responders on scene. No fire, but SAPD is out there right now. Hopefully that will clear sooner than later. Top stories we're following for you today. Homicide detectives investigating a deadly shooting in a west side neighborhood. It happened earlier this morning, the 8200 block of Meadow Fire near Culebra Road in Timberview. SAPD says a man in his 30s was shot multiple times during an argument in front of a home. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Police detained a person in connection to the shooting. Detectives are still investigating. Now, two people were taken to the hospital following a fire at a south side home. Happened around 3.30 this morning on East Edmonds near Division, and that's where fire crews say flames from a car spread to the house. A man and woman were rescued from the home and were taken to the hospital. They're expected to be okay. It's still unclear what sparked the car fire. In your other morning headlines, a walk out at Netflix and some quick thinking hikers save a fellow hiker. And a fish story that is actually true. Have you heard of Free Willy? And a flagger that moves like Jagger. David Sears is here. Do you move like Jagger? No, not oh, quite. <laughs> you were you were thinking about showing us some dance moves. Yeah, well, as long as there's a hip replacement doctor nearby, we'll be good. <laughs> so well, at least you're honest, David. Yeah. We'll, get to, we'll get to the Jagger thing in a second. This is what it looked like from the sky just outside the Netflix offices in LA yesterday. A hundred or so people walked out in protest the way a controversy over the Dave Chappelle show was handled. The office protesters were joined by members of the LGBTQ plus community. In part of Chappelle's Netflix show, he talks about transgender people, even says they are too sensitive. The head of the streaming service, Ted Sarandos, first said in an internal memo that was leaked, quote, the content on screen doesn't directly translate to real world harm. He has since come out and said that a group of employees were hurting from his decision. Some of the protesters said that they did fear attacks. Talk about quick thinking and using your head, or in this case, your turban. That is fast moving water down a river in British Columbia. A hiker slipped into a pool just above that raging river. Five friends happened to be in the right place at the right time. They used their turbans and their jackets made a makeshift rope to get down to the hiker who was stranded. And you can see just how steep the side of that cliff is. The men about to get their hiker out and up that cliff to safety. Naturally, they are heroes, but they don't see it well that way. I say culture, the only turbine is for that you can save the life. I thought it was uh, quite resourceful and um, they showed a great presence of mind to, uh, uh, to be able to put something like that together in, in such a short time. Yeah, apparently that hiker pretty lucky. Those men came along when they did because there's usually at least one drowning in that spot every year. All right, this one is a good one. Save the whales. That's what we're doing. We're saving the whales, taking it to a whole new level. Five friends fishing for tuna off the coast of California. You figure after winning a five hour fight with a 180 pound tuna, probably couldn't, you know, couldn't, couldn't match that, couldn't top that. Oh, they did. The guys came across a whale who looked like it was in pretty bad shape. It was caught up in a lobster trap rope. The rope was wrapped around its tail about six or seven times. Matt, Camperin jumped in with a fillet knife and went to work. He was able to dive down and cut that rope one loop at a time. It couldn't move because it was essentially attached to the bottom of the ocean. Good job, Matt. It was probably one of the highlights of my life, honestly. Good job. 
saved the whale today. The whale kind of came back and it looked like the whale was thanking him, but he just said, you know, it was just a good day. He didn't know if the whale was actually thanking him or not. The good news is they have video proof of that whale of a tail rescue as well. All right, and finally this morning, how many times have you been on a road construction site, come up on that guy holding that slow or stop sign, and you just kind of groaned? Meet the flagger who moves like Jagger. There he is, so, sort of. That is Patrick Deacon. He has moves for all the traffic signs. The X for the stop, the over the shoulder for the slow down and then wave. And then the uh, move along little doggy move. <laughs> People in Canada on this road love him. He gets showered with snacks and water, even little gifts. The job he loves and drivers love the job he does. Is he, uh, is it a dance move or is that stretching and calisthenics? <laughs> well, it's kind of, well, you know, you got the sign and you're just kind of like, you know. Loosen up the hips a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you just yeah. got to, you know, move like Jagger. Well, he does a good job, and he can't beat that view. It's probably a little chilly, but, I mean, beautiful up there. I'd Talk be happy, yeah. That's a mm -hmm. nice view yeah. up there. And, you know, people who are stuck in that traffic, sitting there waiting for him to turn the sign to go or slow or something, you know, and he's, like, at least entertaining. So, well, I he, agree. He is. So, you know. Thank you, David. All right. Keep us posted on your dance moves. Right now, 909, about 68 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A street artist got the surprise of her life while performing on the streets of Boston. We have the story in our next half hour. From 2 to more than 60, San Antonio Independent School District continues to expand their dual language program across the campuses. Just ahead on GMSA 9, how the district says it is benefiting kids in the classroom. In 2016, San Antonio Bennett School District transitioned into their current dual language program that introduces English literacy from pre-K. The program began with only two dual language schools in the district. Five years later, the district has had huge growth, now totaling to 61 schools from elementary to high school that offer the dual language program. Alicia Pereira visited Smith Elementary on the city's east side, where she met two bright students, a native Spanish speaker and another who barely began uh, learning Spanish just three years ago. Yeah, and these girls, their growth is impressive. You'll be able to hear more from them. Um, but really, this program, just to know from two schools to more than 60, it's incredible. But I want you to learn more about um, these students here. It's Areli and Sarai. Los libros se convirtieron en nuestra lengua. Los libros se convirtieron en nuestra hogar. Areli Hernández and Sarai Casillas are fifth graders. They're bilingual, biliterate, and bicultural, but it didn't start out that way. Areli's first language is Spanish and didn't learn English until she began pre-K. It was crazy since like, I didn't know what to do and understand my teachers. The curriculum helped her catch on quickly, just like it did for Sarai, a non-native Spanish learner. I went to do a language in second grade. Um, I couldn't speak that much Spanish, like I knew the basics, but I couldn't speak it. Now they can switch easily between both languages. Un día empacamos nuestra mochila y cruzamos un puente. One day we bundled gifts in our backpack and cross a bridge outstretched like the universe. In math, we do mostly Spanish and in reading as well, but in science, Ms. Doyle tries to only do it in English. So with our star scores, we notice that our students are doing much higher than our monolingual students. So I know that this is something that that people, the parents are looking at when, when they're uh, registering their children in a bilingual program. But for Sarai and Areli, it's about being able to bridge their two worlds. My grandma sometimes, she understands English, but she can't really speak it and sometimes she forgets. So I have to speak mostly Spanish with her. Estoy feliz porque y orgullosa de mí porque lo puedo hacer con más personas. It was so amazing to hear how proud they are of themselves and, of course, their families. Both Areli and Sarai's parents are, of course, proud of their bilingual skills. They're doing well in all of their courses, and they say they haven't narrowed down what they want to be when they get older, but they do know that they have many options, which I was just blown away with because my question was, like, what do you want to be? And they're like, I don't know. I just have so many options. That's a good thing. And That's now that they speak Spanish and English, you know, both languages, that just opens the door for even them. further. So Alicia, what's the future of the program? Do we see SAISD expanding the dual language program further? Absolutely. So one thing that I did not mention is that because they're in this bilingual program, they're 
state-based testing has actually improved. Their scores are much higher than the monolingual students. Every year, more campuses are on board for this immersive dual language program, proving it's here to say. And actually, the SAISD board just had a vote as part of, uh, to vote it in the program as part of the district's policy, which means that it's here to stay forever, or if uh, they want to take it out, many steps would have to be taken in order to do so. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alicia. Thank you. We are now talking to Justin Horn. We are one day closer to the weekend. Some people call this Friday Eve. Mm -hmm. Some Practice call Friday. That's one I hadn't heard before, but I love it. Mm -hmm. That definitely works. Uh, we're so close. And, you know, if you're hoping for some nice weather like we had last weekend, we may get uh, some comfortable mornings, but the temperatures in the afternoons are going to be much warmer this weekend, and it's going to be a lot more humid, too. Mm. Before we, <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> Before we jump into that forecast, though, I want to show you the pod, not the pod count, the drought monitor. This comes in every Thursday, and uh, we like to take a look at it to get an idea of where we are drought-wise. This was last week, and you can see we're starting to see some areas of moderate drought starting to kick in here, even in South Texas, but parts of Texas, 15% of the state to be exact. As we fast forward to today, a little bit of a change here. So now 19% of the state is in drought. Notice we're starting to see some severe droughts show up, especially across North Texas and also across deep South Texas. And focusing a little closer here on our area, moderate drought for places like Big Wells, Carrizo Springs, out towards Eagle Pass. Bear County remains out of drought conditions. We've had enough rain and we're above average for the year, by the way, but the drought Trying to creep back in here. We could use a little bit of rain. There is some in the forecast next week, and we're noticing a few showers this morning up across parts of Alverde County. Some of these, some of these showers could work their way towards Rock Springs, although they're not having a lot of success doing so. This is generally pretty light stuff. And as we look outside here in uh, Bear County and San Antonio, blue skies, 69 degrees at the airport, 66 the dew point, calm winds, and fog is trying to develop up there around Bernie Stage as you go up towards. Uh, Kerrville and Fredericksburg, a little area of fog there. Del Rio down to about two miles, and then fog has been pretty persistent down here from Kennedy and into the Beeville area. That's where dense fog advisory is in effect for about another 45 minutes or so. And that's where visibility could drop below a quarter of a mile. We've already seen that. Temperature wise, 69 in New Braunfels, 67 Gonzalez, 70 right now in Carrizo Springs. Dew point tracker. Man, it would be nice to see those numbers go down, but they are not. In fact, they go up. Dew points will be in the 70s by Monday and Tuesday. I do think, though, by Wednesday, you'll see these numbers drop off a little bit. So we've got another uh, five or six days here of some humid conditions before we get a little bit of relief. Current setup, we have a front to the north. That does not work through. And temperatures today make it up to about 84 for a high, so we will not get a cool down. We are watching what's going on here in the tropics. This system here has uh, some promise of developing about a 90% chance, in fact. And then from there, it does look like some of that moisture will work into South Texas as we see our next storm system. But it's not going to be like last week where we got a ton of rain, I don't think. Uh, it will just kind of add a little bit of moisture briefly, and we'll get a brief window here. This is Tuesday, once the storm system comes through, of getting some rain. Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. I think is that main window when our chances will be there and then it turns breezy and cooler on Wednesday. So here's how it plays out in the seven day forecast 85 tomorrow, 86 Saturday, 88 Sunday, just some small chances for rain in the next week, a 30% chance on Tuesday as that front comes through and then clearing and breezy on Wednesday, guys. Thank you, Justin. 920, about 69 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at nine local resources that can help if you're dealing with postpartum depression. Well, many moms experience postpartum depression or what's known as baby blues. It's a mix of physical and emotional mood swings. What causes postpartum depression? It's probably, um, you know, a combination of a number of factors, one of which is there are huge hormonal shifts um, after you've delivered a baby. That certainly can trigger um, an episode of depression. That was Dr. Sarah Von Aaron Donk, an assistant professor at UT Health San Antonio. She says women suffering from postpartum depression will usually experience sadness and anxiety within the first one to three weeks after giving birth. Dr. Van Aaron Donk says these episodes are normal, but it's important to let someone know you're going through these feelings, even if you're struggling to keep up with your everyday routine.
can be a very isolating process, um, and and it's really really important uh, for for you know you to be able to to get the support that you need. Um, and and some people you know are able to find that easily, and some people it's you know it can be harder. And so um, and so you know just knowing that you're not alone and that this is actually you know really normal. She says the first thing you should do if you're feeling depressed after giving birth, reach out to your OBGYN. There's also a Center for Healthcare Services and the National Alliance of Mental Illness, Illness rather, to San, if San Antonio can help. For more information about postpartum, head over to ksat.com. Well, nearly one in eight adults in the U.S. have hearing loss. A new landmark FDA proposal is aimed at improving access to hearing aid technology for millions of Americans. But uh, some have concerns about that. CNN's Mandy Gaither has the story. For the first time ever, millions of Americans with hearing loss could get an FDA-approved hearing aid over the counter without seeing a doctor or audiologist. As a physician, I have mixed feelings about uh, this process. Under the new proposed FDA rule, hearing aids would be sold over the counter in more traditional retail stores or online, likely making them less expensive and more available to those who need them. While that's a big plus, there are concerns, according to Dr. Aaron Moberly, an otolaryngologist at Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. Are we going to be missing sources of hearing loss that are otherwise treatable or maybe red flags for something additional going on beyond just the hearing loss. You're looking at products that you're going to stick something in your ear that a do it yourself approach. Starkey Hearing CEO Brandon Sawalich notes some other concerns. Going to a local consumer electronic or pharmacy and picking up a product is not the ideal approach uh, for better hearing because you don't know how loud it's going to be. It, the fit, the comfort. So Wallach expects the proposed rule to be finalized in late spring or early summer. The public will be able to comment on the proposed language over the next 90 days. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Now the FDA says hearing loss can be caused by aging, exposure to loud noises, and certain medical conditions. There's still a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Go Spurs, go. Summer Black crushing the Orlando Magic last night. David Sears is back to walk us through some highlights. Next, we tell you how to keep your children safe this Halloween. Halloween fast approaching and trick or treat safety is a top priority every year for parents and for law enforcement. Parents may want to check the sex offender registry prior to Halloween to see which houses might be unsafe for trick or treating. Our digital journalist Ferris Sabawi joins us live to tell us more about a map you can check out to make sure your kids are safe this Halloween. Good morning, Ferris. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, good morning. It's always good to see y'all. Good to see you. So, okay, Ferris, how was this map made? Yeah, so we actually worked with Esri, which is a great um, mapping and, and data company that helps us on some stuff. And, you know, one of the things we wanted to do to make it easy for parents, um, you know, especially around Halloween time, uh, is to put together this map. So what we did was we actually pulled the data from the Texas Public Sex Offender Registry, which is maintained by the Texas Department of Public Safety. Um, and so we pulled that recently with the most recent information and addresses on there and uh, made sure to make a, a map that's really easy for people to check out. So that's on our website at ksat.com. Uh, it's a really uh, great interactive map. You can actually put in your address and search from there and then look at you know the places around you, maybe some spots you might want to avoid. And uh, so it's just, you know, we just wanted to give parents a nice way to quickly check this information, especially as they prepare for uh, trick or treating. Ferris, how's the probation department getting involved this Halloween? Yeah, Mark, that's a very important point. You know, a lot of these sex offenders, there's like thousands of them in Bear County, and most of them aren't under that community uh, supervision because they've already, uh, you know, they, they've already served their sentence, already completed their probation. But for the hundreds or so that are still on criminal probation, the adult probation department told me that they've been making home visits uh, all this week, they have been doing it actually throughout the month and will continue doing it through Halloween night. Uh, what the department supervisor told me was that it was very important to them to make sure that they have a presence out there and make sure that offenders know exactly what their requirements are. Uh, and a lot of that requires them not to open the door, 
uh, not to leave their light on outside on the porch um, and, you know, really not to take part, uh, not to partake in any of, uh, you know, the trick or treating festivities. Um, so the uh, probation department is going to be going around uh, this week uh, and through the next week to make sure that uh, everybody is up to date on their compliance. So Ferris, what are some easy tips or guidelines that parents can follow to make sure they keep their kids safe? Yeah, Sarah, um, a lot of these things are really just kind of common sense. So first, you know, you can use that map on ksat.com. Help, uh, you know, it would help you plan your route out before you go, uh, you know, for, thing, uh, for, for the uh, trick-or-treating experience here. Uh, you know, uh, so that's always good. Another thing that's good to do is to go in groups. Uh, you know, there's always strengths and numbers, as they say. So it's always good to go in uh, bigger groups, maybe take a few uh, families with you or, or you know, just uh, some friends as well. And, uh, you know, lastly, uh, something that's kind of important, especially as it gets darker uh, earlier these days, uh, you know, you can take a flashlight or have, have children wear some of those glowing type, um, you know, necklaces or, or bracelets. And that can really help, um, you know, just make sure that you can see them at all times. Uh, just keep an eye on them. And hopefully everybody has a great, great time on Halloween trick-or-treating. All right. Digital journalist Ferris Sabawi joining us live. Thanks, Ferris. Hey, thank you guys. See you soon. Let's go outside with live cam. It is a beautiful day with a capital B out there. 71 is not too bad, Justin. Yeah, it's not bad at all. We started off pretty nice here, although I just went outside starting to see some clouds trying to creep in here in San Antonio. So cloud covers trying to move in. I still think we see a partly cloudy day. Clouds are thicker as you get out west, and there have been a few showers out in Valverde County. Let's look at the satellite radar, and I'll show you. Uh, where the, the cloud cover is right now. You see it out west, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Uvalde. That's where some of those morning clouds are. And then a few showers as you get uh, back north of Del Rio. Perhaps a few light sprinkles moving towards Rock Springs, but I think the majority of the area stays dry today. Temperature-wise, right around 70 here in Bear County. You'll find some slightly cooler numbers. Comfort, Kerrville, that's where it dropped into the 50s this morning. And now... They're dealing with fog up there. Visibility has improved around Bernie Stage, but still dealing with some fog around Kerrville, Kennedy, and out towards Del Rio as well. We still have some dense fog advisories in effect there along the coast. Football forecast. We do have some games tonight. It's good. 80 degrees at kickoff, 73 halftime. Sunset is at 657. It will be more humid and warmer this go around than it was last Thursday and Friday. Guys. Thank you, Justin. All right, go Spurs go. The San Antonio Spurs opened their 2021-22 season last night at home, AT&T Center. They performed a little magic on, on their opening night against Orlando. David Sears is here with more on Hoops Hocus Pocus taking place at the Wow, Earth. it was, uh, you Center. remember last year we talked about how this was going to be a fun team to watch and then they mm -hmm. kind of petered out at the end of the season and didn't make the play. This, I'm going to say the same thing again this year. Fun this is going to be a fun team to watch. They're a year older with more experience so they've got a little bit better idea of what they're doing out on the floor and don't blink because you might miss something because <laughs> these guys get up and down the floor so let's get right to the highlights from game one of the season last night it was a full court press man they were all over the place last night the youngest team pop has ever put on the floor they're 25 years old that's the average age is 25. They started off slow on defense. The Magic made their first six, but here they come. That was Doug McDermott with back-to-back -back threes. And then there's Derek White and Drew Eubanks, Lonnie Walker. Look at that shot right there. These guys don't even let the shot clock get down very far. Remember they used to go on that slow offense and, you know, wait a while and then hit it. Man, they come down the floor, pass it around, and shoot it. There's Keldon Johnson with another shot right there. Third quarter, Devin Vassell just had a fun time. Yeah. Well, they were still in the second quarter, I think. Is this the second? Yeah, there's, there's Lonnie Walker to the rim. I was a little ahead of myself, I guess. You know, I'm so excited. I'm running they, up and down the floor. <laughs> they are very quick. Yeah, here we the go. Ball. There's Devin Vassell. Okay. There, there he is. I knew he was showing up at some point. He's still having And fun. then there's a steal. The Spurs went on a 20-5 to five run in the third quarter. You know, I said they were, like, a little slow on defense in the first quarter. Nah, they picked it up in the second half. And then there's Devin Vassell. Watch the red light. Boop. Timing. It's all about timing. You see that? He beat the, beat the buzzer. For the, okay, end of the game. I'll just shoot that one over here. This guy had 19 points from off the bench. So we're going to hear from him, and we're going to hear from Derek White first about the big win, 123-97. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, get out, run, make a play for yourself or a teammate. Um, crowds into it. Um, it was a lot of fun out there, and I think we all enjoy playing with each other. 
Yeah, I think that's the energy that we want to play with. That's the team camaraderie we want to play with. Um, I think they said seven people scored in double figures, and you know I think that's the type of team that we have. Any given night, anybody can be our leading scorer, but it's not about that. It's about playing with with energy, and, and that's contagious. You know, once we got out in the second half and started getting steals and turnovers, I think the whole momentum of the game changed, and you know we really just started feeding off that. Uh, Pop's been telling us that th these guys are young, they got legs, they're in great shape, so there's no reason to hold back, and he's not going to be playing them like 36, 40 minutes a game. Three guys played 30 minutes, and that was it. That was only three, and the most played was uh, DeJounte Murray played 31 minutes. So these guys are, you know, letting it all hang out there. Seven guys in double figures last night. They also shot uh, 50%. They shot 98 shots. Remember we were talking about how... Get up and down the floor, not standing around, not going that, you know, the old slow, run the shot clock down. Right. 98 shots, that's a lot of shots for one game. And they also, so, so that was 50% uh, from the field and 43% from three. So that's a pretty good start. So one game in, how did you describe them in the newsroom this morning? You are feeling? Optimistic. Cautiously? Opti cautiously optimistic. There you go. I just I like mean, optimistic. You're, you're just optimistic? Yeah. Yeah, they're going to run into some teams that are going to be able to slow them down a little bit, and that's going to be the, the question is on how they can handle that. And the question is, can they keep up this pace for 82 games? Because well, they were like, well, but we if they're not young. playing but, but 30 minutes. Yeah, and these guys, you know, the average age is 25. Come on, get out there. Go. They play basketball all day, all night. Young so, guns. So they got it. So now they're back on the road tomorrow, already on the road. Tomorrow night, they take on the Denver Nuggets. They got back-to-backs already. So tomorrow night, they take on the Denver Nuggets in Denver, and then they come back home, and they take on the Milwaukee Bucks. Okay, so a couple very Saturday. early tests. So, That's so. way different than playing on, say, an Orlando Magic team. Yeah. yeah. So, but, and oh, by the way, if you watch the Spurs game, I know we're going to miss Patty Mills a lot, at least on the floor. Yeah. But when you watch them, watch and see, they've got the guys waving the towels to take up for Patty Mills. Missing. Oh, good. So we got the towel wavers. So we got hey. that going. And we've got a lot of young guys that get up and down the floor and scores a lot of points. All right, David. Well, we found so out go. another reason that they won last night. Stephanie Cerna was at well, last night's game. There you go. Them. And they sent in some of these pictures. That's Luis. He's a photojournalist here at KSAT. Their daughter, Rooney, and, of course, Steph, going on almost no sleep. So can she go to 82 games? It might go 82 and 0. Can Steph go to 82 so she's games? Already, she's <laughs> already got him on a roll. If we give her time for some naps, maybe. Yeah, it's the, it's the reason why I'm here this morning, filling in for Stephanie. Well, they had a great time last night. And, and Steph, we love you. Luis, uh, maybe Rooney's the good luck charm. Ooh, it's probably true. Rooney. Mm -hmm. Rooney has a lot of energy. She's good energy, too. She's like a little rabbit's foot with a mask. <laughs> good luck indeed. David, thank you. <laughs> Let's take a look at Transguide, folks, see what's happening out there. We had an incident out there, 410 at Callahan a little while ago. It has now cleared. We've got some residual slowdowns in that area, but it is easing up pretty darn quick. It is 940 and 71 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Former got a surprise from an artist when singing in the streets of Boston. That story next. What are the chances of this happening? A street performer singing a John Legend song spots Legend himself in the crowd. Hi, nice. CNN's Janie Mose reports on a legendary encounter. A street performer in Boston you give me was crooning all of me when suddenly she got all of him. John Legend loves all of you. The man whose song she was singing was standing right before her eyes, though at first... I saw a man with a trench coat and a mask step forward. I thought to myself, that looks quite like John Legend, but that couldn't be him. But then he took his mask off. I was absolutely stunned. In town for a concert, Legend was outside Faneuil Hall with his wife Chrissy and his kids watching... Part-time singer Radha Rao performed Legend's song, never dreaming he'd be there. It's definitely a fan favorite, and it's a song I feel so emotional about. She said her mind went blank, she was nervous, but she kept singing as he nodded encouragement. Anyone who watches The Voice might expect him to wheel around any moment, but when Radha finished... Give it up for Mr. Legend, John Legend! That's a surprise. Legend reached in his pocket for his wallet, walked over to Radha and gave her a tip and a hug, telling her the song was beautiful. <laughs> Give my all to you. But how much of his all did he give? Could she tell us how big a tip? 
I would love to, but I actually don't know. She just put it in her tip box and continued her set. But the one thing she does know... I, I did give it my all. Jeannie Moose, CNN, New York. And almost anybody else would have stopped singing, you know, with, I, with him standing right there. I don't know if I could continue. Mm. I really want to know how much he tipped, though. Yeah. Yeah. Good for her. Gosh, she'll never forget that encounter. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. So she should change artists and see who else shows up there. Because it's a really popular yeah. part of Boston where she was at. You know, like Lady Gaga. Mm, that's what I was thinking. Swift, it was Gaga. Justin Bieber. Justin Horn. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wait, that <laughs> yeah, was a weird right. transition. Oh, yeah, yeah. Justin okay. Bieber to Justin Horn. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. planned at all, Justin. <laughs> well, she, I was impressed. She was not phased at all. Like, she yeah. just kept right on going. No big deal. Uh, one thing that we're going to be watching for this winter, guys, La Nina. It was here last winter, if you remember. Uh, Noah's supposed to put out their report, their winter report today, what we can expect. It's probably going to include a lot about La Nina. Let's take a little bit of a look at what that means. So as uh, we set up with La Nina, we look out to the Pacific and there's warmer waters that normally get pushed towards Asia with the trade winds. Sometimes they're strong enough, though, where we get the upwelling and you get some cooler uh, water conditions, sea surface temperatures as you get out into eastern parts of the Pacific. And what does that mean? It changes the weather pattern a little bit. You get typically drier and warmer weather down to the south, cooler weather up north, and then some wet weather across the west coast and another patch here in the Midwest. Now, I know you're saying, well, last winter was La Nina. We got that huge freeze in February. It's possible that we can still get some cold air down here. That it doesn't completely change the weather pattern. This is in general. But this is what we are expecting, and I know there's been some stuff on the internet about this winter is going to be just as bad as last winter. There is no indication that that is going to be the case. Can't say it's not going to happen, but there's nothing that jumps off the page and says, hey, yeah, this is going to be another brutally cold winter. In fact, uh, we're expecting drier and warmer conditions just based on the fact that there is La Nina in place. We'll keep an eye on it. Otherwise, we are watching a few showers up across parts of the Edwards Plateau this morning. These are pretty light moving through Valverde County. Notice we've got some clouds out west. Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Uvalde, Hondo. Uh, the, the clouds have been fairly thick uh, moving in, and uh, we're seeing some of those trying to move towards San Antonio. A little closer look at some of those showers there moving west east across Valverde County. Outside, we've got partly cloudy skies off in the distance. Officially, the airport, though, reporting clear skies. 69, calm winds. Dew point is at 66, and we're likely looking at some of that fog off in the distance. Places like Kerrville dealing with visibility down to zero. Del Rio down to about two miles. Kennedy's starting to see some improvement there, a mile and a quarter. And dense fog advisory is still in effect for another 15 minutes or so down to our south and east. 60s and 70s to go around this morning. We'll be in the 70s here soon in San Antonio. And dew points are in the 60s and 70s too, so it is pretty sticky. As you look north, kind of a dividing line there, I-20. And there is a frontal boundary there, so that's why it's drier up to the north. This front does not push through San Antonio, though. We do not get to feel some of that drier air that they are uh, having up there across parts of North Texas. 84 the forecast height today, partly cloudy skies and looking at the forecast. Uh, we'll see just a couple showers both Saturday and Sunday. And then as we get into uh, next week, here comes an approaching storm system. We may be getting some moisture out of the Pacific. That means there is a window there for rain, not a big window, but I think Tuesday night and the Wednesday morning we'll have some chances for some showers and storms and then it will turn breezy and cooler on Wednesday afternoon. 85 degrees tomorrow, 86 on Saturday, 88 Sunday, a 30% chance of rain on Tuesday and hopefully some cooler conditions by the end of next week, guys. Thank so, you, Justin. So fall is going to come back eventually. Eventually. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Next month? <laughs> Maybe next month? Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And Jeff. you said we're going to get it? No, I'm not going to bring up the whole winter <laughs> thing again. He's like, well, I'll run away. 949, <laughs> about 72 degrees. Next, RJ Marquez talks with a unique and local band that didn't let the pandemic stop their music. When you think about the music scene in San Antonio, a brass band might not be the first thing that you think of, but the members of Bayer Brass are bringing a whole new style and sound to the Alamo City. We sat down with the band to learn more about their origins and how they thrived during the pandemic.
there's a lot of really good musicians here. So it's like, how can we get a lot of people together and create something special? That was our goal, was to give something back to the community, make it street style, make have everyone participate, everyone be involved. So a lot of our, our playing really relies on the crowd. One of our goals is always to find what music are people listening to nowadays and how can we incorporate that with the New Orleans style. We try to we try to point the music to everybody, you know, just like we, we play a Billie Eilish tune and a bunch of kids will recognize that. We were used to playing every almost every weekend at that point and then to all of a sudden everything gets shut down and it's like, now what? We saw it not as, um, oh no, we can't play anymore, but we saw it as an opportunity to kind of fine-tune things, tighten things up. It is easier for us to kind of spread out and social distance as we perform. Good morning. Hey, guys. Coming up on live, Ricky Gervais talks about his podcast. Plus, we'll get more great bargains with Monica Mangan. We'll see you very soon here on live. And temperatures are in the 70s right now. We'll be up around 84 this afternoon, 85 tomorrow. Some mid upper 80s this weekend. A little better chance of rain than we get into next week. We end on another article from KSAT.com about Timothy the Hippo out at the San Antonio Zoo. He's already a pretty big deal, and now his pout has some clout. Super cute. The San Antonio Zoo posted a video of Timothy and his grandmother, Uma, giving kisses. And it's been viewed more than 4 million times in just 24 hours. Oh, not just kisses, paint kisses. Zoo officials say the painting exercise is an enrichment activity for the animals. Uh, zoo spokesperson said they started doing this uh, for them in 2017 after Timothy arrived from Albuquerque and was comfortable in his new environment. So the painting is done with non-toxic paint as a voluntary training exercise and a form of sensory enrichment. Now mm -hmm. the sessions are done a few times a month, but the hippo's enrichment schedule and the caretaker schedule are ultimately what determine how often the hippos get to paint. All right, so there you're seeing some of it. They said Timothy's grown quite a bit since he got to the San Antonio Zoo, thus his kiss has gotten bigger. <laughs> so cute. Mm -hmm. So and a number of animals participate. Yeah. Not just the hippos. They have tigers, snakes, birds, elephants, bears, and more. They get the tigers to do that? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I uh, don't know how that one works. Well, well actually, it's, uh, they, they get the Etch-A-Sketch. Oh. Um, now, Timothy and Uma both paint. Uh, who's Uma? Uma's a grandma. grandma. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. They both paint. But Timothy, they say, is more tactile in nature, so he is our go-to. And these paintings are apparently for sale at the gift shop there at the zoo. I want a, I want a Timothy. I know. Farewell to DMSA producer Gabby. Today's her oh, last yes, newscast. Gabby, Farewell. Good job. luck. Mwah.